Hello and welcome to Newsfeed, your daily dose of what people are talking about online, from news stories to what's trending. A week after America's largest wildfire in a century, which destroyed large parts of the Hawaiian island of Maui, locals are slamming tourists for not canceling their holidays. The devastation is immense and residents need time and space to clear up and to mourn after the wildfires took more than 100 lives and left thousands missing. They have been urging visitors to stay away, yet many continue to fly in. Sorry has more. On the 8th of August, a series of wildfires sprang up on the island of Maui. Warning sirens didn't go off as the fire approached Lahaina. The power cuts limited the reach of other alerts, catching people off guard. For many, the only chance of survival was the ocean. The same waters that our people just died in three days ago are the same waters the very next day these visitors, uh, tourists, were swimming in. Just a couple of days after the fire, a snorkeling company organized a charity tour 18 kilometers off the coast of Lahaina, the historic capital of Hawaii. Okay, just imagine, yeah? Almost 100 people dead and counting. Thousands of locals and Hawaiians lost absolutely everything. And a thousand more still missing. Legal authorities not letting the locals and Hawaiians come back through with supplies and things people need. Because it's dangerous. But then, you see this. People on vacation, freaking snorkeling. Officials urged tourists to leave Maui and recommended travelers to cancel upcoming trips. 46,000 people did leave in the wake of the wildfires, but some stayed and others even chose to fly in, angering the locals. Yes, like don't visit Hawaii. And for some reason, you know, the colonizer mindset is gonna say, oh, it doesn't matter what's going on in Maui. I'm, I'm going to Oahu, so it's fine. I'm just gonna break this down for you. First of all, when you see humanitarian rescue going on, um, to people, native people, any people at that point. Um, and you're like, it doesn't matter, maybe vacation's more important, um, is bizarre, it's bizarre. It's entitlement, it's despicable. Some citizens criticize the US government for accommodating tourists. We are literally going to be putting resources into ensuring that 4,000 tourists, people who are showing up to Hawaii, despite Kanaka Maui, like explicitly asking them not to, uh, we're gonna make sure they have food, security, shelter, and basically anything they need. Meanwhile, like indigenous Hawaiians are oftentimes living without that food access, without that access to security and shelter. You know, it's, it's a gross double standard. Hawaii's economy relies heavily on tourism. It helps generate 80% of the state's wealth. Yet, many natives believe tourism does more harm than good. Stop going to Hawaii. Native Hawaiians have been asking us for literal years to stop booking trips to their islands as the tourism industry is actively decimating their quality of life. Social media was flooded with Hawaiians begging tourists to leave their land after the post-pandemic tourism boom burdened the state. Locals wanted to preserve their way of life and save their land by shooing people away. While that may be impossible, they're at least reminding visitors that this is someone's actual home. China will no longer release its monthly youth jobless rate after recording six consecutive months of record unemployment. Officials say the pause aims to give them time to refine the way the figures are calculated. From this month, China will suspend the release of urban unemployment data, specifically that of the youth and other age groups. Our main reasoning is that in view of economic and societal progress, we need to review our statistical methods and further optimize our labor force data collection. Right. Mm. Critics, though, they're not buying that explanation. They say China wants to stop people from talking about how the economy isn't doing so great right now. And the move is just the latest example of the government limiting access to data it deems sensitive to manage the narrative about the weakening economy. So yeah, hitting pause on youth jobless stats has only spurred a backlash and more conversation on the country's slower-than-expected post-pandemic recovery. 
Many young unemployed graduates express anger over the government's decision online, saying it's a way for officials to bury bad news. Within hours, hashtags related to the government's decision were viewed more than 180 million times on social media platform Weibo. And if you're wondering why, well, it's because China's jobless stats are actually seen as a key indicator of the state of the economy. The last stats you'll see for a while are from June, when the urban unemployment rate for people aged 16 to 24 hit a record 21.3%. FYI, China doesn't track joblessness in rural areas, so its stats have only ever covered those in cities. But looking at what we've got, what it does show is that alarmingly, one out of five young people in China can't get work. The problem? There just aren't enough jobs. Is the youth unemployment real in China right now? Yes, because I'm staying at a hostel and it's filled up with the younger generation who are looking for positions. And this is a national phenomenon. I visited a Chinese company yesterday. The employees look super young, which means a large amount of aged worker were also laid off. The tech industry is experiencing layoff from Shanghai, Hangzhou, in any major city you can think of. And the economy is not doing well because the street that used to be filled up with people and busy restaurants, these regions are far less busy compared to the past, means people are not spending money. I suppose this is post-pandemic honeymoon period. Faced with record unemployment, millions of young people have turned to China's lucrative live stream sector. It's one of the country's fastest growing industries. And as Talha reports, all you need is fast internet. And oh, the gift of the gap to get the Benjamins rolling in. Welcome back in everybody to the Home Shopping Network. It is think of shopping channels and many people may think of this. In addition to the limited edition bottle, this is the 1.7. But it's 2023 and these days in China, this is how you promote a product. Zhang Jinyu is one of the country's millions of highly paid live stream sales hosts. Influencers like her promote products and answer viewers' questions about the items in real time. Jung spends more than six hours a day talking non-stop into a camera. I like presenting. I like the camera. I like expressing myself. I was a former model and a blogger, so I thought maybe this work of a live stream host would be more intuitive. The response to each live broadcast is a reflection of my skill as a host. There are a lot of comments and interactions in the live broadcast room. And that interaction with viewers is important. Live streamers make their money through virtual gifts and tips as well as brand tie-ups. The more viewers like you, the more money you can make. Live streamers can make hundreds if not thousands of dollars an hour from promoting everything from makeup to home appliances and even toilet paper. They've shaken up the traditional shopping experience as products they advertise link directly to popular shopping platforms like Alibaba's Taobao. But while the job may seem like easy money, a lot of prep and research goes into live stream broadcasts at a time when shoppers have become more discerning. It's not as simple as me selling the goods and someone buying them. After all, we are separated by a screen and there is no way to communicate face to face like we are doing now. Being able to build trust isn't that easy, but as long as you can communicate and resonate well with the customers, then you build a sort of friendship with them. Only then will they trust you and your opinion, and that relationship will encourage the customer to make a purchase. Live streaming generated $480 billion worth of sales in China just last year. That figure is forecast to jump by 30% this year, showing the industry's resilience even in a difficult economy. Stats from 2020 show the industry employed more than 1.2 million people and the sector is only expected to become more competitive as live streamers buy for eyeballs. Top live streamers may draw my attention but doesn't determine whether I buy something or not. Broadcasts with relatively new live streamers are also quite appealing. I've even watched some broadcasts where live streamers use dance moves to sell goods, which was very interesting. In fact, it's new tactics like those that make me place orders. And that's exactly what these live streamers want, to make money with the click of a mouse. An alarming trend appears to be taking hold in both the UK and America. 
and it takes the form of looting, inspired and organized, it seems, through TikTok, Snapchat, and other social media, much like flash mobs where people come together for surprise performances in public. Strangers are coming together to loot shops en masse. This was a luxury store in Los Angeles last weekend where tens of thousands of dollars worth of designer handbags and other accessories were nabbed by looters before running off. In London, JD Sports on Oxford Street was hit and there have been a number of other incidents outside London since. Some towns have been put on alert for the weekend ahead. The simple message put out on social media to carry out the looting seems to me Meet at this place at this time, wear a face covering, and make sure you can run. TikTok has denied responsibility, and the police are telling parents to get a grip. Instigated through several social media platforms, we understand, uh, particularly a couple of very high-profile uh, social media influencers that have millions of followers, instigating young people to turn up in their masses, hundreds of young people at a time, rampaging down Oxford Street, running in their droves, shops having to put their shutters down, the police telling them to close the shops because they are expecting mass looting. You know, this is Britain in 2023. What is going on? And actually, you know, what I'm saying to parents, particularly who live in and around the London area, if you have reason to believe that a young person in your care, your child, was in central London last week or in South End on Sea two days later or was planning or did turn up at Bexley Heath on Saturday morning, which the Met Police intercepted, I'm, I'm saying you should be talking to them about this. You should be explaining to them, even if they didn't shoplift, running oncoming traffic, rampaging down Oxford Street is not acceptable behaviour. And that's really why I'm calling on parents to get more involved. The Rubik's Cube is hailed as one of the most popular toys of all time. But try telling one of the 1,400 competitors at the Rubik's World Championship in South Korea this week that the spinning cube of colors is merely a toy. It's a mechanical puzzle and it's serious business. There were 17 speed cubing events all about solving these twisty puzzles. But the most famous is solving the original 3x3x3 three by three by three puzzle in the shortest possible time. I myself had oh, spent hours trying to solve Erno Rubik's Cube, which he invented in 1974. Wow. Now, these competitors regularly solve it in around five oh, seconds. That's crazy, yeah. huh? The final went right down to the wire and was won by just one point of a second by world record holder Max Park from California. He didn't quite equal his best of 3.13 seconds, but that's not to take anything away from an impressive display. His second time! What? He's won it in 27. All right, on to what's trending. Until recently, making yourself look good meant a trip to your local salon to get your hair done. But nowadays, both men and women demand a lot more to freshen up their looks. And prices are through the roof. Surprisingly, in some cases, it's actually cheaper to hop on a plane for that makeover. Check out this story from Lara. TikTok sensation Bryn Wright embarked on a whirlwind 10,000 kilometer journey. All for a single purpose, a fresh hairdo. Trading the familiarity of her local US salon, Bryn's appetite for unconventional beauty experiences knows no bounds. This should be no surprise to anyone who's watched me get my dental work done in Thailand or my tattoos in Colombia, but I'm obsessed with beauty tourism. She calls it her ultimate life hack. I'd received an email from my U.S. salon letting me know that they were raising the prices of the hair extensions I get to $4,400. So I decided to do a little shopping around and realized a lot of the hair inspo photos I'd saved on Instagram were from this absolutely world-class stylist who lived in Turkey. So just out of curiosity, I slid into his DMs to get a quote. And tell me why this man said he would do my dream hair for $500. My flight to Istanbul was $800. $100. My Airbnb was $350 for the week. Total, it was $1,600 for everything, which was $2,800 less than I would have paid back home. So I saved money and got an amazing vacation. Bryn's video has not just gone viral, but also ignited a greater conversation on beauty tourism, a growing trend among many U.S. citizens. 
think the new American dream is to leave. I looked it up. The average American spends like $13,000 a year on health expenses. If we took that money we spend each year on health expenses in the US and put it towards getting those same services done abroad, we could take like three to four amazing vacations a year. And so many Americans already do this. I learned that 150,000 to 320,000 Americans each year travel overseas for medical care. Critics call her tone deaf and privileged. They argue that most people's cash and time don't allow for globetrotting like digital nomads. A few even mention the impacts on countries' economies and the lives of locals. Others voice their approval and even recommended countries to visit, like Korea for skincare and cosmetic surgery, Thailand for dental work, and Mexico for prescription drugs, all while exploring the country and soaking in culture. Now, Bryn is inviting her followers to join her, travel and save on accommodation altogether. After all, the saying goes, the world is your oyster. Well, for some at least. And that's our show. Find our latest stuff on YouTube and do subscribe to our channel. See you soon.